Hello out there, it is I, Ruining the Viking Reviewer, and uh, welcome to a little thing that I'm doing right now called Author Talk. And uh, next to me I have a very good friend of mine uh, by the name of... David Olmsted. And you, sir, just happen to be a published author. Yes, sort of happened, yes. <laughs> um, uh, now, very recently, here is the book in question, and uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, read off the title of that for us and let us know what the book is called. Okay, this is the, the first alphabetic inscriptions and how they revolutionized the history of Israel, the rise and fall of alphabetic Akkadian, 1475 to 850 BC. Why don't you go ahead and uh, tell the audience exactly uh, kind of what it is that you're, you're trying to uh, uh, express here in the book. First, we have two kinds of writing systems in history versus the cuneiform and Egyptian hieroglyphic. Those symbols represent sounds or syllables. In contrast, our writing system is the alphabet. Where we have letters. It's much simpler, easier, maybe 22, 20 to 25 letters as opposed to maybe 200 for the other types. And amazingly, the first alphabetic inscriptions found around the land of Israel have not been translated or adequately translated. And that's what this book does for the first time. And how it's able to do that is a change of paradigm. Everybody has assumed that these first inscriptions were some form of early Hebrew. It turns out they are in a related language called Akkadian, which is a language uh, the empire language of the Mesopotamian, Meso Mesopotamian empires of Babylon and Assyria, and so on. And uh, that's how it began for me when reading a magazine called Biblical Archaeology Review, and where it describes some of the untranslated and short inscriptions in the Sinai Desert. And they were thinking it was Hebrew. It didn't make any sense to me because I knew Akkadian was the empire language of the era. Egyptians and the Mesopotamian empires communicated in Akkadian. So it seemed to me that these inscriptions should be in that language of some, some shape or form. And that's how this project began. Mm -hmm. I thought a short little research paper and turned into a book. <laughs> um, and uh, about how long did it take you to um, do all the translations, get all the information together, and uh, kind of get it get it ready to the point of where you were just like, I, I have a novel on my hands as opposed to a paper? But it's about three years of working early mornings, mm -hmm. almost every morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had to, uh, again, I just thought I was having some success with these short inscriptions in the Sinai Desert, and I wondered just how, where Hebrew began and this Akkadian ended. And I just kept going and going, like the Energizer Bunny. Right. Until 850 BC with the Moabite style and a great drought, as it turns out, which caused a revolution in the area. Mm -hmm. And uh, as history teaches us, revolutions are very often the end of one phase and the beginning into a new. Um, now, <clears throat> an interesting fact, um, you are fluent. In, uh, in any particular of these languages? Well, I have taught myself Akkadian. Mm -hmm. There's some good uh, grammar out there, as, as uh, well as some good uh, dictionaries now as well, mm -hmm. available to the general public. And that's what I use. So, so I'm always thankful to those scholars who wrote them. <laughs> uh, standing on the shoulders of those before. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So now for uh, the end of it, for uh, uh, our viewers out there, um, these uh, inscriptions uh, that that uh, you've done the research on, how old would you say these 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 inscriptions are? Uh, I'm getting started with in a pictographic form, like most writing systems have in Egypt, mm -hmm. a place called Wadi El Hol, in about 1475. You see. Mm -hmm. On to 850 BC when the revolution came. So, roughly about three and a half thousand years ago? Yes, yeah. Right, okay. Again, the cuneiform writing was, and the hieroglyphic is older. Right, yes. This started out actually as a, a memory aid device 
for mercenaries and uh, traders. Uh, now I know the Egyptians because they had one that was it was almost kind of like uh, uh, writing. Uh, hieratic. Hi okay. Yeah. Did it? Yeah. That okay. came out of Egypt as a simpler form of uh, hieroglyph. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. See, I don't. I don't have no degrees in nothing, folks. So mm -hmm. I'm winging it here. I'm winging it here. Just, just inherently smart. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, so. So we're talking about now um, essentially uh, translations of a language that is roughly about 3,000, 3,500, almost 4,000 years old and uh, ending right around almost uh, about, about two and three fourths thousand years ago Yeah, uh, is, is kind of what you're talking about. Um, now well, the language didn't quite end, but the, the writing did. Continued continue on for a little bit longer. Well, like but to the point where, where where it evolved into something almost completely different. Well, Aramaic. Aramaic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of like the difference. Um, like uh, I I have written uh, or not written. God. I have read um, some of like the uh, the works of like Anglo-Saxon, like the the, the Anglo-Saxon language and stuff, the very, very early forms of what you could consider English. Yeah, yeah. And, um, like, the, uh, uh, the, the tales of, like, Beowulf and stuff like that. And it's really strange reading it because there's something inherently familiar about it, even though it's completely foreign. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it, sounds li it, it sounds like uh, English being spoken by somebody speaking gibberish. You know, but there is something strangely familiar about it, and I, I can assume that's kind of kind of what it's what it would be like. You know, as as uh, um, someone that 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 uh, knows the Aramaic, going back and trying to like look at this stuff, would you say it would like, it would be similar in some degrees? Like there would be something familiar about it, but it would yes. still be very 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 yes. foreign. Yes. Yes. Um, now. Doing your research and doing your translations, did you come across anything uh, interesting uh, or uh, like uh, I don't know, like where's the ark? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just nothing like that. But the, the big, the key thing is how important this drought of 50 BC was mm -hmm. in the history of ancient Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a time of uh, Jezebel and Elijah. Mm -hmm. That God has mentioned in their stories. Now Elijah, the Tishbite from Tishbe in Galid, said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years, except at my word. And, but uh, and it's also confirmed in sediment cores of the Sea of Galilee. Mm -hmm. I don't think no one has appreciated just how important and just how destructive that uh, drought, ten-year drought, was. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Moabite Stell references it, the Stell and Dan, tell Dan that references it directly. I'm oh, sorry, what? Dan is a city north of Galilee. Okay. Uh, an ancient city north of Galilee. Uh, right now, I am going to flash a picture. <laughs> Did you guys get that? That was the map right there. Pay attention. Okay. So go ahead. Um, There's a whole lot of Googling right there, folks. You better appreciate that. See? I care. Right here. Right here. That's okay. for you. Yeah, both these uh, inscriptions mention uh, the destruction and the rebellion that's been going on around them. Mm -hmm. And these are like last testaments of the priests of the old order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course what happened uh, in the, term of the city of Dan is uh, when the Yawas Revolution won, mm -hmm. they destroyed all the writings, all these inscriptions. Mm -hmm. The Dan Stell was used in the construction project to make the wall. Mm. And the surrounding road, the access road around the wall. The mobile tell apparently was just uh, torn down and buried. Now you talk about the uh, the the Yoit. Yes, this um, revolution mm -hmm. um, really represented the rise of Yahweh as a national god for Israel. Mm -hmm. Prior to this, an earlier linguistic form. This I did know. Was uh, used alongside other. Uh, Deities from Mesopotamia. Yes. That too was a big one. Yes, as well as um, some of the, uh, the the biblical stories were also uh, inherited as well. Everything from yeah. the, uh, the original flood um, to the uh, even the stories of Eden 
and um, just just some of the other uh, biblical stories that are a part of the Old Testament. Uh, yeah, have been found that th those stories are much older, yeah. much much older than uh, the uh, the the Jewish any of the Jewish or Hebrew texts. And these inscriptions really confirm that link. Mm -hmm. the, in a way, alphabetic Akkadian is the missing link between alphabetic Hebrew and the cuneiform Akkadian. So Israel is really a continuation of the Mesopotamian tradition. So mm -hmm. it's a branch, right? Not something completely separate. <clears throat> Interesting fact for you guys. Um, if you wanted, if you were ever interested to see like uh, what the inside of one of those ancient temples in like uh, uh, Mesopotamia or Babylon or whatever looked like, all you have to do is go to a Catholic mass. Uh, all of the colors, everything from the purples, the whites, the blacks, uh, the the. Uh, uh, the, the I, I, uh, uh, iconotry is different, you know, with the crucifixes and everything like that, but everything from the mass to the processions to the way the, the, the right priests, magical. yes, everything that they do, um, from what some of the uh, texts that have been read or, or the step by the, that have been found left in like some of the temples and, and by like some of the priests and everything and what they've also seen on some of the wall reliefs and everything like that, almost identical, almost exactly identical as uh, what what goes on inside of a Catholic mass, yeah. high mass. Yeah. Related to that, you know, some of the inscriptions are by student priests, mm -hmm. apparently, learning their lessons. You know, certain they write about certain facts and how they do ritual. Yes. Uh, so that was interesting. Too. Right. Again, it shows Israel was uh, completely different than what we imagined. Yeah. Prior to the drought of You know. Well, I, I, a lot of people. Um, the, the funny thing that that, that uh, I have noticed through the ages is is, is that um, a lot of people when they talk about Israel or they talk about you know the the, the the Israelites and stuff, you always hear the stories of like you know Exodus or you hear the stories of like you know the bondage in Egypt, which was not true. Um, they did not build the pyramids. They were not slaves. They were actually a military order because it it, it states very. Very, very, uh, 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 very plainly in plain language that uh, they went into the armories and took up arms. Um, slaves wouldn't have had access to that. Uh, they would not have had, had access to the granaries. You know, these, these were military orders. They were there originally as a protective fighting force. Well, I think I would even go be more radical on that. <laughs> How so? <laughs> uh. These texts show Israel had a completely different religion than is presented in the mm -hmm. uh, Old Testament. Anything prior to the United the, the Divided Kingdom mm -hmm. is essentially fantasy history. Yes. Okay. You watch like uh, Charlemagne. I mean, I mean, like King Arthur. Yes. Some historical cores, mm -hmm. but essentially bardic well, tales. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they're they're uh, um, you're talking about uh, now? Are are you talking? Pretty much like uh, uh, pre Abraham, or was well, he? I mean, no, this is the, like King David and before. Okay, 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 I, I, okay. I get what you're saying, yeah, because uh, that that was the thing about like you know the whole like uh, uh, Abraham Abraham uh, uh, aspect. That's that's kind of like where the mythology, because Abraham was always kind of like seen as like you know a, a mythical person uh, and everything.